Hi, welcome to Transmission Hour, Boston's best music. I'm your host, Tim Casey. Tonight we'll be hearing from an old friend of mine, Glenn Williams, a singer-songwriter who also plays guitar and ukulele. We'll be talking to him later on in the show, but for now, let's hear some music from Glenn Williams.
welcome to Transmission Hour, Glenn. Thank you, thank you Tim. I'm so glad you finally made it. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. Oh, it's, oh, it's, it's I thrill. know. Thank you very much. You've been bugging me for so long about well, yeah, it. I've been on your case, but it's, it's, you know, I think that, uh, first of all, let me thank you for all the musicians that have been on. It's been a You're fabulous welcome. experience for everybody that I've known and spoken to. It's been a... It's been an awful lot yeah, of fun. Yeah, people had a lot of fun doing yeah. all those. The crew, too. Crew. You know, yeah, oh, you gosh, go. oh, gosh, all those people <laughs> that you'll see rolling by at the end of the uh, film. But um, one thing that I always ask, because I like to, you know, back up into the early history, is, uh, and I know that you have a very deep musical history with your family. Yes. What's your earliest memories of music that seemed to change your life or set you on the path, or was there a bunch of them? Oh, there were, there were a whole bunch of things that happened. Uh, as a kid, as you know, my, my, my father was a musician and he was a drummer and so I ha always, as a real little, little kid, uh, had a lot of influences around my house that were musically uh, in, in inspired, you know. But the thing that, that really turned me on and got me really involved in music is uh, when I was in grammar school, uh, I was that kid that got sent down to the auditorium, you know. This game. Oh yeah, where the, where the piano was. Get out of, <laughs> yeah, exactly, right. you know. So uh, I was supposed to be down there setting up the, uh, the the chairs for assembly or something, and I made my way into the activities room, and there was this big upright bass there. Oh, and oh, I'm, that's different. And I'm plunking away on it, oh. and and Sister Cornelius walked in, and of course I thought my life was over, but instead she she actually said, Hey, you want to learn how to play that thing, kid? Wow, and I said, yeah. she went, what a nice get me lady. Out of math class? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Very so, nice lady. Very, very nice lady. So for for a long time, until I was like in the eighth or ninth grade, she taught me, uh, gave me upright bass lessons. And I got to play classical music, I got to play in, in the Archdiocese New Symphony, and so I, I really got this appreciation and, and love of, uh, of, of music ensembles, especially where there's you know, a, a bunch of people involved in working uh, as, as a group at that young age. Um, but eventually I wanted to be the only bass player, so I, I had to change my direction a little <laughs> bit later, later. Oh my gosh, yeah. So and actually, I'm, I'm thinking back, um, there was a picture of you as a baby on somebody's lap, and yes. everybody always said, wow. Yes. I was bl blowing blowing into Dizzy Gillespie's trumpet. Oh, my gosh. In, in, the, in the dining room of my grandparents' house on Ellington Street. My father was a big big jazz drummer. He played Fluji Williams. He played with Lionel Hampton. He played with Count Basie. He played with a lot of a lot of pretty prominent musicians in the 50s. And and, uh, and there was always that kind of thing happening around around our, our house. I know that there's always been that musical influence in my in my genes. Oh yeah, I mean you, you can't it's saturating your house too. So yeah, what can you, you do? You, you know, yeah. Can't get away from what I did notice when I started hanging out with you was that you were more into uh, this. Explains it a little bit. You were more into the jazzy. Yeah. Stuff like in the '70s, and mm -hmm. you know, and maybe even the '60s. I'm, I'm not sure, but um, yeah, you kind of went in that almost LA jazz movement. Whereas when I was listening to stuff, I was probably listening to country western stuff and then punk stuff right. from the '70s, which was like the exact opposite. Right. So, do you think that was was that something that you were attracted to, or you think that was an outgrowth outgrowth of who well, you were as a kid, almost? Well, I think that uh, I don't think I've really changed a lot of what I. What I like to, uh, how I like to interpret my music, or, or how I, the venue or the, the the channel I use to get the music out that that I want to do. You know, I, I can be very folky too. I can be country mm, too. Yeah. I can be yes, kind of rocky too. You know, but I I do like those chords, and I like the way the the the, the, the melodies kind of flow along through it. I also like the idea that I can go away from the melody if I want to and try to really get a little scat thing going here, mm. and kind of change up the the feel of something. So, yeah, I, I don't yeah, think it's actually, on purpose. Yeah. I think it's just what what ha what happens to me. Which I just realized you did some scatting on uh, one of your newest songs that we did, a hell of a time. Hell of a time. Yeah, and yeah. the end of that, you just you just get carried away and you right. start doing all well, the scatting. One of the things that I love about Hell of a Time is is that that Andy Hollinger, who who is an amazing guitarist here in Rosendale, is him and I kind of play off of each other a little bit, and that's kind of like a thing that that we've kind of discovered a little bit that we're able to do. I'll scat a little thing, and then the next four he'll he'll play the same thing, so we kind of talk back and forth a little bit. In, in the song, and, that, and that's, um, I like that.
38 years old All he'd ever gone to bed with was a cold Now he said to his mama Mama, I'm afraid it's true Only woman that could love me is you The girl could almost drink her age in beer a Couple of cases, give or take a year Now she worked at the hospital Hey, lots of people do And that's where they fell in love Oh God, I wish that that never met, not even briefly, I know what you thought, you thought that they might, now what was the problem, the problem was chiefly, she works the day shift and he works the night, no they never met, not even informally, I know you thought things like this work out right, no no they never met, not even abnormally, cause she works the day and he works the night Now the boy is almost 59 You ask him, how's it going, Frank? And he says, fine And what's become of Mama? Well, Mom is in a better place And he points his finger right straight out in space The girl is fine, the chief admitting nurse Considering what she had for brains, it could be worse she could have been a victim of the dreaded age and flu. She could have had to live with you know who. But they never met, not even briefly. I know what you thought. You thought that they might. Now what was the problem? The problem was chiefly she works the day shift and he works the night. Now they never met, not even abnormally. I know you thought things like this. They never met, not even informally, cause she works the day shift and he works the night. Yeah.
to meet his mom. Natural causes, the bottle, not the bar. They found him in the dining room, his face was in a stew. They dressed him in a suit of shiny blue. Now that same year, the girl gave up the ghost. The minister said she'd be missed the most. The patients cried a tear, recalling how she signed the cat. The nurses said she'd find a man at last. Oh, but they never met. Not even briefly. I know what you thought. You thought that they might. Oh, but what was the problem? The problem was chiefly she works the day shift and he works the night. No, they never met. Not even in spirit. You thought things like this were got right No, no, she went to heaven And he's nowhere near it Cause she works the day shift And he works the night One of the cover tunes you do yeah. is uh, uh, they, never they Never Met, which was like this hilariously downbeat song. <laughs> I and I was like, where did he find that? Where did you find it? Martin Mull wrote that. Really? Yeah, and I've always been kind of a little fan of Martin Mull. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put it on, I'll put Martin on if I'm kind of like a depressing thing happening or if I'm kind of in a down mood. He always You've got like an me. album of his? He's got several albums. Oh, Yeah, gosh, he's got I several releases. That. And one of the songs that I always got the biggest kick of was They Never Met. And it's, a, it's, and it's portraying these two people's lives who may be perfect for, for each other, but one works the day shift and one works the night. And I was working in nights at the Gillette oh, yeah, Company, I yeah. think, when I fell in love with the song. And I said, this is so perfect. I said, yeah, how many, you know, so that's a multitude of changes and chords and fun. So I just said, <laughs> That's a great song. Right, I said, why not? Uh, in from the cold. In from the cold. Yeah, uh, which I love that song. And um, what's 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 what are the lyrics about in that? Uh, in from the cold is is about that coming of age with um, your 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 daughter. You know, you you married you you have a, you have a little girl who's always been this little protective thing. You know, you kind of always you always have to be around and and really being protective of her. Of her. Then all of a sudden, you can see it happen. This snap of a finger. All of a sudden, she kind of gets it. And she's, um, um, just the other day, as she turned away, I could see the feelings leave her. And, I could, and that's just, she could, she got that gumption and stuff. And now, all of a sudden, it's, I mean, you know. Yeah. It's me, uh, she's gone now. Yeah. You know, don't worry, it's my problem, not yours. Don't worry, it's my yeah. problem, Dad. And that's yeah. kind of like a, an awakening for, for dads. I even say it, and when I play it sometimes, I ask if there's any dads and girls yeah. out there. And, they, and afterwards, I, sometimes I've gotten something that goes, to you, yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Been Which there. is really like a cool one. Uh... <laughs> with a 
If I saw you in heaven Could it be the same If I saw you in heaven I'll find a way Through night and day Cause I know I just can't stay here in heaven Could you hold my hand If I saw you in heaven Could you help me stand If I saw you in heaven I must be strong And carry on Cause I know I don't belong Life can bring you down, life can bend a knee Life can hunt you down and have you begging please Begging please If I saw you in heaven Could it be the same If I saw you in heaven Beyond the door There's peace I'm sure And I know There'll be no more tears in heaven And I know I just can't stay Very good. You translated uh, "Tears in Heaven." Yeah, to "Tears the, in Heaven." Really uh, nicely. It, I've always loved that song, and uh, I think I, I was actually sitting in front of the TV one night, and I was listening to it. It was on some kind of programming, and I found that I was able to kind of get some of the chords, uh, you know, to be able to start in that A major and be able to move my fingers around a little bit. So I said, "Oh, get the chords." I got the changes, and I I learned it, and I noticed that I could pick it in a just sounded kind of sweet, mm. uh, and um, it came, came out beautifully. And, and, and then with, with the strings and the effects behind it, and, and, and Andrew's genius uh, playing of the guitar, adding these little areas to fill things out, it just it came out came out the way I wanted. That came out the way I wanted it to. Yeah, that sounded nice. Yeah, that sounded beautiful. Which actually brings me to your uh, choice of songs, and and even your recent. Uh, grab of the ukulele, mastering yeah. of the ukulele, in that Mastering's a lot <laughs> of the, a lot, that's <laughs> no, true, um, a lot of your music in particular and the music that you pick to play um, has echoes of 40s and the yeah. 30s in it, yeah. like that type of jazz. And yeah. that was probably a result of your home life more I, than seeing anything I, on I television. I think probably, yeah, oh yeah. yeah. It, was, it was a lot, my mother was obviously this huge, huge jazz fan and, and there was always swing in the house and there was always uh, a, a lot of, uh, of that kind of music uh, being played around in, in, in the home. And I just kind of always loved that kind of showmanship, that 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 kind of Cab Calloway thing, and and I really really yes. you know enjoyed all of that kind of so.
And one of the songs you did tonight was uh, probably one of the oldest songs I know of yours, which is called I Truly Do. I Truly Do. And we were talking about it, and this is going to be true confessions time. Uh -oh. You said something about, hey, it was the first girl I wanted to date, and blah, blah, blah. And I went, ooh, didn't know that. Yeah. So what's the story behind that well, one? Well, it, it is kind of, it's, it's a song that uh, I was already still playing the guitar and pretending to be, you know, the one of the Beatles or whoever I was trying to emulate at the time and stuff. And, um, and I think I heard... Uh, uh, John Lennon say, yeah, that looks like a cool job. We can get girls yeah. that way. And I, I said, oh, that sounds like a nice idea. So I, I had this, um, this little friend at school that I was kind of interested in, and I just kind of made oh, up this, funny. this song. It's had many, it's taken many different roads and different interpretations over the years. But, uh, but yeah, that was kind of like, I purposely wrote that to kind of impress this girl to go to a dance with me or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work. You though. can. Oh, well, okay, it didn't work. You're not a cat anymore. <laughs>
like weeks go by Now you're grown to numb to even cry Someone comes to say They found your boy today And you know that he won't be coming home And um, Ed, you do a solo song on the show, I did. too. You've done, I mean, you always do a bunch of them in concert and stuff, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, called Best Friends. Yes. And what's the, who's that by? That's by, by Will I Am by the Black Eyed Peas. Oh, okay. Wow. And it's the end of one of these Pixar movies who, that I've become huge, a huge fan of because my grandson, Devin, is a Pixar nut. He, oh, it's he great loves having Pixar. little kids around. You get to see all those movies. Yeah. <laughs> he loves Pixar movies, and it's the, it's the final song to, Mon um, not Monsters, Inc., one of them, Toy Story, one of them, one of them. and, and uh, we're sitting there, and, uh, and, and he actually liked the song, and it was the, the ending song as the credits are going. And so I'm kind of sitting there, we're playing, and I hear this, come on, and it's the ukulele leads it off. So right away I go, oh, Get your attention. What, what's that? <laughs> uh, and, um, and I love the message of the song. I think the song is so positive. It, it's telling, you know, telling your buddy that no matter what, you know, we're going to be friends. Uh, no matter what kind of problems you're going through, no matter if anybody's giving you some grief or something, you have that assurance that I'll be there. And I love the message. So uh, it was kind of like a song that I, I wanted to do because, you know, I also do a lot of kids' things where I go and play for, for kids and, and kind of in a circle. But I also do a senior citizens thing where I go to some of the, the nursing homes and, and do a circle with them too. And it's always, it's always this uplifting kind of song that tells somebody. And if you deliver it correctly, they believe that you're talking, you know, to them and about them, that you're not alone and that you do have a friend and I'm your best friend. And so don't worry. It's That's going cool. to be okay. That's, cool. That's a very <laughs> positive message. It's a neat song. Um, and actually, it's a positive message coming from a positive person. Hello, no, thanks. Yeah, you're my bestest friend 
Yeah, you're my bestest friend. You know, you know, you're my bestest friend. else you want to talk about? Before? Well, no, actually, that's, you know, that's pretty much uh, it. You're interviewing me. Yeah. I have, do I have a few questions for you? No, no, that's <laughs> some other interview. In fact, that, if I ever do that, I was thinking, oh, I can't interview myself, so you're going to have to, you're going to have to be I a guest be more, interviewer more at some point in the near future. Well, you know, the only thing I think I, I, I'd, like, I'd like to say is that, you know, it's such a great opportunity we get at, at BNN to be able to do uh, go in there and do programming that, that, that's, pa that's passionate to us, to you, yeah. it's passionate to me too, you know, you know I'm involved. And, and it's such a great opportunity. And, uh, and uh, thank you for, fi for finally, I've only been after you for years to drag yes. you into yes, the end. Yeah. But finally the equipment got up to normalcy. No, <laughs> I just the, the, the work process no, got the up to time, the point the where time. you can actually handle yeah. it, yeah, you know. Because when it was tape based, I could have never done that yeah, show, right, exactly. you know, so. Uh, but I'm just uh, glad that the opportunity's there. I can't, I can't believe anybody would ever complain about that place right. at all, no, because I, it's like, come on, you know. Right, right. Yeah, you get it perfect over, you know, GBH, if you want to spend $20,000 a yeah. show, you know, but. but uh, well, a lot of the programming that you've done has been perfect, so it's been, oh, a, lot, thank it's been you. a lot of fun to watch, and I've come in, been fortunate enough to be able to come into a couple of shootings, and now I've actually gotten to do one. So yeah, it's been, so that's it's been great. Fun. It was great having you on, Thank Glenn. you, Tim. And thank we'll you. see you again real soon. I hope so. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> Well, we hope you've enjoyed listening to Glenn Williams as much as we have here at BNN. Keep your eyes open for the next Transmission Hour, where we'll bring you more of Boston's best music. Until then, I'm your host, Tim Casey. Thanks for tuning in, and keep watching the skies.
Thank you very much, folks. Thank you, Billy and the gang. <laughs>